My blade is yours. Welcome everybody to this video. In this video I will be explaining everything you need to know in season 14. I have played in the last 6 days already around 70 hours. So I have an insane amount of knowledge and experience and I will show you everything you need to know and should be knowing in this season what you should take care of, what you kind of what is different and what now you are able to do. First of all, let's talk about a few topics. The first thing will be the new map. The new map. What is different? What can you use and what should you know? For example, ward placement can be a thing. Then the next topic will be void grubs that's also very important slash herald what should you be playing for void grubs are the things that spawn before the herald spawns uh, let's do void void grub slash dragon then later we'll be talking about herald and and then there's a few other tips i can give on that but so just i have an idea of what i will be talking about because this is the new map what is clearly different is the bot side here this bot side is completely different. You see now that you that there's no longer this wall. You can now walk through here. And you can also walk through there. There are also more bushes. Here's another bush. Here's a bush. Here's even a bush, which you can use. And um, also on the other side of the map, on blue side top lane, it's also the same. On red side, it's actually the same. Nothing really changed there. Otherwise, it, I think it would just be too much. Too many changes and it just gets way too confusing. Okay. So, first of all, on the new map, the difference is that now there's a huge wall also on top lane. That is a... I mean, the walls here are all a little bit different. And because of that wall, you're now not a really able to gank top lane. A lot of people think that they can still try to gank top lane. But that is, in most cases, just a massive mistake. Top lane is really, really hard to gank. Even if you play champions like Kane, Rek'Sai, when you can get over the wall, it's still not so easy to find very good top lane ganks. It's still doable, but it's for sure harder than in Season 13. And bot lane is a little bit easier to gank, no matter if you're blue side or red side. Um, but of course, red side is a little bit easier to gank, especially easier to dive, just because of these bushes. What about top lane first? Let's take, take a look at top lane first. So how do you gank top lane even? How, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna show you when here's most of the time a ward you cannot really avoid it so you can only walk through here if you manage to find a good uh, if you if the enemy top laner is very far ahead let's say the enemy top laner is red side you're blue side and he walked up very far you're gonna walk through and catch him because you're gonna cut him off even if there's a ward inside here if the if the top laner is uh, around here it's really really hard to find a gank and most of the times I would just recommend to continue clearing or just look out for, I don't know, counter jungles or whatever it is. Okay, that's the next thing. As well, I have to say that red side top lane is really, really easily diveable. So it's better than in season 13. So what you can look out for is whenever your top laner trades with the enemy, your blue side top laner trades with red side top laner. Then you can look out for um, some sneaky dives. You can walk through here. From this bush to top lane, it's very easy to dive because you're literally on the turret already and you're still in Fog of War and it gets very easy to go there. So diving is easier now than in Season 14. Generally, ganking is just harder. There's one thing I can, uh, one tip I can give you. When the enemy top laner is here, let's say, and there's no ward in this bush, the top laner still has a vision around like this. So he still sees everything when you're here, when you're there, he still sees you. But he wouldn't be seeing you when you are in this little corner here. So he can still try to gank like this. And then you gank through the bush because he doesn't see through the bush. So there are still some techniques you can use to find a gank. But generally speaking, you can only gank top end really well if the enemy top ender walks up too much. Or if you can make a, make a find a good dive. And the next thing that is really, really important is lane ganking now in season 14 lane ganking is way stronger than it was in season 13 so you are able to find very good lane ganks for two reasons reason number one is because it's very easy to get into these bushes and the enemy top laner is most likely only gonna ward this bush because this bush is just is so extremely important. And reason number two, um, the enemy top laner doesn't expect ganks because he knows he should be very safe from this wall. So just because he thinks he's safe, 
doesn't mean that he's in instantly safe. So you, there is ways so you can punish top lane. Um, but as I said, it's harder than it, than it was before. Now, the reason why Riot Games made it harder in the first place is because of Void Grubs. And we will get that in, into a second. And let's take a look at bot lane now. Here, when you are blue side and you want to dive red side, it just gets very easy. Because you have these bushes. With control ward, with sweeper, you just get, I would just say, priority or tempo or whatever keyword you want to use there. But you get pressure while being in this bush. Even if the enemies, for example, have a ward here, you walk in, you sweep it, and you took the ward. And the enemies stand on the tower, they have a pre pretty much of a, a problem because they cannot really walk up that well. Here, here's a bush, here's a bush, here's a bush. You could be cheesing everywhere. So it's really hard for the enemies, especially when you're a champion, when you are a champion like Sing Zhao, Elise, Lee Sin, um, Rek'Sai, to be sure that you're not going to be bottom anymore. So bottom can be easier to punish, but the reason why Riot Games made this is just because now, um, if top lane was easier to gank than bot lane and they are the Void Grubs, and people would play way too much about, uh, way, we would play way too much on top lane so riot games made it in a way that you can play for both because bottom is easier to gank but people want to play for top side but what my personal criticism on that is is that i think it's still a little bit too easy to play bot side and uh, most junglers just permanently play bot side and um a lot of people just ignore the first void grubs or just take it when they can and then they leave it and um it's just way too i i think to top lane is not that um I think it's better to just play bot lane still and not play too much about top lane. And I kind of dislike it that they made it so hard to find gank options there. What is, the, what is different? Now, there's one more very important thing I want to say here. I These bushes, about we will talk about ward placements in a second. Um, this entire guide here is just that everybody understands what they should be knowing. Um, what they should be taking care of. What they should be just doing in their games. And I will be probably after like the consistathon is over. I will be making an course videos, which will be longer, more detailed, more explained, more knowledge, more everything. So if you want to, if you want to improve as in jungle, I highly recommend to check out the course now. Okay, here these bushes. These are extremely important. This is what is especially new. Look at it. This bush here. If you are red side. You want to have a ward in this bush. Because this bush here gives you enough vision to cover this, this and that. You have everything covered. And it's absolutely impossible for a jungler from blue side to gank the enemy mid laner from <coughs> red side without being seen. Okay, you can try to walk around it completely or walk on the other side. But this bush here is very valuable for control wards. It does get cleared very often. But still, if you're a mid laner, make sure to ward this bush or control ward this bush. This is really, really fucking good. Especially before void grubs spawn. And the same is for bot side. Having control in this bush is massive. Here, for blue side, this bush is better. And for red side, this bush is better. And the reason why that is... Is because you on blue side see everything here from the red side. And if this was a red side bush, you only see really this amount, this area, which doesn't really do that much for you. So for red side, this bush is more valuable because you can see into the enemy jungle blue side. I hope this makes sense for you guys. Okay, and mid ganking in general, there are a lot of mid laner players I talked with that say mid lane ganking is harder now. I do agree, but I have to say it really, really depends on the champion. Because there are so many champions like... Let's say Rek'Sai, Xing Zhao, Lee Sin, that can find mid lane ganks and, can f and are able to burn some flashes or summoner spells. And I do think that you can walk in through this corner here. This is very good. Because this bush does never track so far. So you're always... It only tracks like until here. Ah, let's say there. So you can always walk through the corner and then find a mid lane gang through there. And I don't think a mid laner can ward too much. Because he would need to have control of this and this bush. As well as having control over these long brushes here. Which is just isn't that easy. 
and I do think that um, you can find mid lane ganks, but the reason why mid lane just generally isn't ganked that often is simply because uh, bot lane and top lane are more accessible. Okay, that's about the new map. Now the next thing is I want to talk about Void Grubs and Dragons because I have this question so many times. So, Void Grubs, there are in total six of them. So there are first Void Grubs, I don't know exactly when they spawn, but there are three of them spawn. And then when you clear them, another three minutes later, I think, the next three Void Grubs spawn. Void Grubs do nothing else but do giving you more damage true damage it is on structures that means on turrets now having void grubs is very very good always it's decent it's same for dragon stats it's always decent to have but you need to look out for split push champions void grubs are way better for champions like jax fiora master yi trundle dr mundo for these champions void grubs are extremely good as well as having a lux caitlin bot lane for those two Void Grubs are very, very valuable because they are able to take the turret pretty quickly and then go to the next line and push that turret. For champions like Tristana, who really want to push the turrets. Champions like Zix, they permanently are harassing the turrets and the enemy um, champions and just are pressuring everywhere. Now, if you don't need that, if your team is not meant to split push and the enemy team is also not meant to split push, Void Grubs are not that important. That's very. That's the first thing I want to say. Void Grubs are the nice to have, but not important. The next thing is, the free Void Grubs are decent, but that is not the end of the world for both sides. Free Void Grubs is nothing that special. What is special is having 6 or 5 Void Grubs. Because starting at 5, whenever you hit a structure in the next, I think, 13 seconds, they will be spawning the small Bellwave minions, I'm calling them these little uh, whatever they are ghouls or what, what you call them and they also deal damage to the turret and that's just very decent to have also with champions like yorick it just is very nice to have these as well okay so what what we take away from that is you should be playing for void grubs void grubs are very useful they are a tiny bit better than dragon but it depends on the team comp team comp for example for master e Jax, Three Void Grubs is better than one Dragon. But if there's no Split Push Champion, then the first Dragon can potentially, depending on Dragon and again on the team comp, can even be better than Void Grubs. But if you have already three Void Grubs, you really want to get the another free for two reasons. First of all, then the enemies have no Void Grubs whatsoever. But the main reason is that you get over these five Void Grubs, and at, especially at six, you spawn two ghouls. At five, you spawn one ghoul um, whenever you hit a a structure it's just extremely nice to have all these six so you can split push all the game and then split pushing becomes a massive win condition so whenever the void grub spawn you can look out to ask your support this is a jungle tip i can give you ask your support to roam for the void grubs especially in lower elos jungle supports don't do that but if they do and then the enemies manage to fight this let's take this next as an example void grub spawn jacks sing sound to that fate fight the void grubs they are indeed stronger than orn master Yin and vladimir but if jenna's here too it is a four we free that means we are finding in numbers and that fight we should always be winning as well illusion and the Emilio can never be tower diving the Vaos. That's why Vaos will also stay in a fine position, even if he loses some CS and if they um, if they freeze, let's say. But if they hard push, then Vaos will eventually not even be able to get dove because Emilio and uh, Lucian don't have that much damage without things out things out to dive that. So ask your support to roam as well for Void Grubs. These are pretty pretty decent to have and fight over. Next thing, when you are blue side, it's way easier to fight for Void Grubs because of this bush. If a Xing Zhao walks through like here and Twisted Fate comes and Milio comes like this, you see everything just from this bush. So you're in this bush, you're permanently in Fog of War. You have a few different ways to access to Void Grubs, void grubs whether the enemy team only has one real way or two ways, but this top lane way doesn't really exist that much. And... As I said, blue team will always have a massive amount of vision and wards everywhere around these areas, so they're able to track that down. That's why it's way easier for blue team to play for void grubs. On the other hand, it's easier for red team to play for dragon. It's the same concept. Dragon red buff will most likely have control over these bushes, and it's easier for red to access to get access to the dragon pit. 
if you cannot fight the void grubs you should never die for them those are pretty decent but it's not like baron buff these are not essential to success these are only very very nice and can help you on your win conditions but you should not be dying for them so when you think you lose the feel free and the enemy supports are roaming for the for the void grubs you most likely have to give them it's it's similar to dragon void grubs are a tiny bit better as i said depending on team comp if you have split push champions but it's very similar you should just not be dying for that okay that's about the void grubs that's all i wanted to say here void grubs in comparison to dragon dragon especially when the game goes very long you want to play for the soul still so it really depends on the team comp whether you want to play for soul or you want to play for void grubs now let's talk about herald and then we're going to talk about baron as well herald is more tankier to to kill and it's a little bit harder to kill him it's also harder to proc the eye on the new herald that means until the eye really is there so you can proc it it's a little bit harder to just to kill the herald so i also don't think the herald is that important in comparison to if we compare it with what you need to do in order to kill the herald so it's hard to kill the herald and it doesn't give more than in season 13. okay so if you manage to get the herald that is really nice but it's not going to do that much and it's really hard to clear so in a lot of situations i personally just don't want to take the herald i'm not even taking it also takes me to wait too much time even if i if the even if the enemies do not contest it and as i said in, in most situations i just give the herald and i don't really care fighting over it i'm not i'm not gonna risk my life on that but if we of course get a lucky ace or a good team fight of course we're gonna take the herald because it's still an objective which is just decent to have then please guys only drive the herald when you can drive when you have a driving license okay driving the herald is i'm just gonna say it how it is it's fun but it's it gets uh, inted by so many so many people in doing doing that because they think oh that's funny what is going on but it is inting i'm gonna explain you now how you should be doing it you can use the herald driving to get closer to where you want to be for example you spawn herald here and then you want to play for mid lane then you should be taking the herald drive and instantly drive in a curved way like you're playing with nunu and then str and then damaging the turret you always need to hit the turret with the herald drive. If you don't hit the turret, in 90% of the times, it is useless to drive the herald only to disengage or to... I will explain, I will explain it. But you should, if you drive the herald, make sure it hits a tower somewhere. So it actually deals damage and is useful. Even if enemy is there, you get a shield and you spawn ghouls if you crash it on the tower. Now, there's another thing. You can use the herald to disengage on team fights. For example, if there's a fight, you just you just did crash the herald on TT2. You did crash it, and then there's a fight, and the tower is gone. You can just take the herald and just go inside the herald and just run away with it like you run away with Cyanold. Okay, that's about the driving me me uh, technique. If you drive the herald and you crush a wall, let's just say. Then the herald doesn't charge anymore it just walks straight to the turret and just gets cleared and is useless it doesn't charge your driving is already the charge onto the next turret and whenever the turret is destroyed you can charge again basically uh, we all entered it in the first time but now you know you can use it to disengage from team fights and you can use it to just engage onto the turret but you want to strike a turret w when you're driving and you you can use the drive to just be a little bit faster because it's just you just get like more movement speed doing so and let's talk about the baron nasher now baron is squishier than it was in season 13. so especially when you have team comms like cassiopeia uh, like kale master yi like a cockmore you kind of kill the or azir you kill the baron very quickly so especially for late game macro this is my tip for you you can take the baron sneakily very quickly and you can also yeah it's, it's just very easy for you to clear the dragon because he's more squishy than he used to do but you need to t watch out the Baron does deal more damage than in Season 13. So it deals more damage and it's more squishy. That means, especially with a team, 
when, for example, the enemy top laner's bot then with Ignite, or let's say Jax with Ghost is bot then pushing, then you can just start the Baron, because you cleared extremely fast. Let's just say with this team comp, you cleared extremely fast, even with Vladimir, just because we have Master Yi and Varus. And if the enemies try to fight it, then we're gonna turn on the enemies. Jax has to roam, so we are forcing the Jax to come. Then we're gonna turn on the enemies, and we're in an absolutely fine position. And if the enemies do not come, even close, then we can end up considering finishing the Baron just because we cleared very, very fast. Okay, that's about Baron. Oh, there's one more thing that's really, really important for me to say on the new map. Now, because this map has changed, it's very easy to cheese on, cheese on blue buff, no matter which side. If you're red side, you can take three camps and cheese on blue side. And if you're blue side, you can take three camps on bot side and clear onto enemy, enemy uh, uh, red side on blue buff. Now, it's very important to understand when this is going to happen. Champions like Graves, Nidalee. Um, Xing Zhao, Lee Sin, Rengar, Kha'Zix, they are, have no problem in invading you if you are, let's say, a champion like Amumu, Master Yi, Talia. Champions that can, engage, can get cheesed very easily, they need to watch out for these cheesy um, invaders, especially through this blue buff. So there are a few things how we can avoid these invades, and I'm going to explain it. Number one is... You are gonna start blue buff. If you start blue buff, even if the enemy start red buff and then try to cheese you, you already cleared your entire buffs. If you're really scared to invade you. And the second thing is you just drop a ward on this push or on this push, no matter which, uh, whatever you, whatever side you are. And then you have no problem in invading it. If you take care of these invades, if you respect these invades, you should be in a very fine position. I'm just saying that it is very easy now to invade because of this bush, because you can just walk through there. So watch it out. Make sure to not get cheesed by that. Make sure to not stupidly lie because of that, and then you will be in a very fine position. Okay, I think this is everything explained on the new map, what is important. There will be way more detail way more knowledge way more everything on the course then but i will be first i mean this is the first week of the season i will be continuing with my consistent ton and once that finished i will be adding more of these videos if you like that on the course so whoever has the course will get these videos as well in the future okay guys did you like that or is there still Would questions you know,